Hello, welcome to this webinar, Trimble Connect Planner Extension. The agenda for today, we're gonna take a look at some of the challenges with traditional project planning. How Trimble Connect Planner can help solve all these, some of these problems. We're gonna do a couple of demonstrations. The first one is for a prefab steel and concrete building. And then we're gonna see some functionalities on the infrastructure project. We're going to share with you a little bit how, we think, how we're using Planner Extension to work in the team. We're going to do some Q&As and a summary. So, the challenges. In traditional construction planning, product planners often rely on Excel or project to create the building erection plans. These plans dictate all other plans upstream, like production planning or when you plan your log logistics. So, for the planner, Lack of visual connection between the plan and the 3D model is a challenge. And for the team, it's difficult to understand and communicate with stakeholders in the project. This forces the planner to mentally map the process, which can lead to delays and errors. Additionally, it can be difficult to effectively communicate with the team and get some input. How to change the plan and what to do correct, how to do it correctly. So a solution for this is the planner extension. It's a visual 4D planning. We're starting about disassemble the building, it means a top-down approach. We start with the last object first, then we reverse the order in the plan to get the erection sequence. We add dates one by one in groups or with some logic. And then we're gonna go through how we work in the team, assign permissions, view or edit, and the interactive animation is a very good tool to have get feedback from the team and show how you have planned your erection sequence. To export this finally to CSV that you can share either through Tecla and directly to Eliplan or another production management system. So first of all, the plan extension you can find on the left hand side when it's activated and will pop up like an icon, looks like an agenda. So let's first take a look at the prefab concrete and steel project. I am starting this demonstration in the middle of the planning process. Part of the building has already been planned. So my responsibility in this project, I'm the project planner. So I'm responsible for creating the erection sequence. The final goal for this plan is actually to export the CSV file that you can import for your production management system. So let's jump into the demonstration. First of all, we want to take a look at how the engineers had to divide the model into different building phases. So you have the main building, storage, external building, etc. So first of all, I want to take a look at what I planned so far. So I activate the view and then I click on the planner extension. I activate the plan. And I just want to adjust the speed now so it go through the simulation a little bit faster. So now you can see the simulation what I have planned so far. So what we're going to work on today is the external building. So we just, first of all, we create a new sub plan. We name it external building. And when we activated that sub plan, we click on auto add on button. So now when we click on an element, on object in the model, it disappears from the 3D model and it creates a task in your erection plan. Another way to add objects is to if you press down the control key on your keyboard and click on the objects in the 3D model, it gets highlighted. And then when you press the plus button, it also creates different tasks in the same order as you click the objects in the 3D model. So we continue with the add-on functionalities and here I see that I made a mistake. So I need to adjust that mistake. So then we can play through the simulation step by step and see where the mistakes are made. And at the same time, we can investigate where to put it. So it's in the correct sequence. So you move by dragging and drop it to the right sequence number. And then we take a look at that everything looks okay. So now we're gonna continue a little bit more fast pace, the rest of the objects in this external building. <clears throat> so the first thing we do now, before I share it with others, others can see it. I just want to see the, how I disassembled the building. So I can play through the simulation, how I clicked all the objects in the model, how I disassembled the building. 
So what I want to do now is reverse the order of what I plan so I can see the actual how the building is going to be built, the erection sequence. So I reversed order and now I'm going to see for myself first and share with the team that now we can see when we go through the simulation how it's going to be installed on site and see if I have planned something wrong. So now I'm really satisfied with the results so far. So now we're going to focus on adding dates to different objects. So first of all, you can add dates by individual. You press on the uh, date icon and you can add it one by one if you want to. Or if you press down the shift key, you can select multiple tasks and add dates to all of them at the same time. If there are several objects you're going to install on the same day. So we continue doing that this with all the steel on the first floor before we move over to the hollow core concrete slabs. On the slabs, we're going to do it a little bit differently using the logic. So we just highlight all the hollow core slabs in the first floor. And then we're going to use something called replan. So we just select the start date when the first one is going to be installed or the first one's going to be installed. And then we have decided that we are able to install seven slabs each day. So then it automatically puts seven objects or elements each day and will continue so uh, until you are done with all the slabs in the first floor. So now I continue with the steel on the second floor just to give them a date and I do the same routine with the holocore slabs on the second floor. Using the replan functionality select the date the first one is going to be installed and just seven elements per day. So then I do a save of the plan because I'm satisfied with the plan so far. So now when we've done this we want to run through the simulation of what all that I planned so far in the project. This is just a visual understanding how it's going to be built and with dates and everything. And you just want to run through it immediately for my sake as a planner, but also if I get input from other team members before the next step is actually to export the CC file that you can use in the production management system. So when you press that small icon, then you pop up a list with the configuration that you can use. So in this, you can use the label is actually the information from the IFC model, the, the global unique ID, that's the object ID, date, sequence, and plan. I just open the list briefly so you can take a look at it, how it looks. So a small summary, what I've shown you so far, we added objects to the plan by virtually disassembled the building. We corrected some mistakes easily. Reverse the order to get the actual direction sequence from start to finish. Assign dates directly and automatically. Review the plan with my colleagues. Exported the plan. And now the plan is available for the whole team. Uh, to give input, do changes. It depends on the project, uh, but it will always, always happens on changes. Planner extension was developed in collaboration with Overhalla Betongbygg. They gave us good input how to develop this, especially from because they had increase of project complexity and increase of project size, and therefore they are needed a planning tool to meet those demands. So they wanted a system where they could easily handle changes and incorporate them, them seamlessly into the installation plan. This was crucial for them when they're working on large, complex products. You can read more about Overhalla Betongbygg and the story about the plan extension development on our website. Let's move over to the infrastructure cost in place example that we prepared for today. 
We have just started up with infrastructure projects and therefore we got some initial feedbacks so I would like to share them with you today. Especially in Norway in the tender phase it can be useful because the requirements from the owner demands that you have a 4D simulation of your project in the tender phase. The other thing that we have seen is that it can be from week to week planning on site during the construction could be useful to visualize for the rest of the team what you plan working on this week. So the starting point of this presentation that I already created the structure of the plan in phases. It could be weeks, it could be different areas, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to use the data table to assign objects to the plan. So this is more than in construction site when you have week to week planning to do, then you can use this functionality when you have understanding of the model structure. So the first of all, we just want to take a look at the concrete in this project. We are going to open up data table and only select the visible objects. And then we'll open up planner extension. Now I grouped this information from the model and it's grouped by position number. So I'm going to use that to select the objects groups that I want to do to add to planner. So I just select them in the 3D model and just add them, add all objects to one plan. So you see there are several objects in those position numbers. So I'm going to continue doing this using the same functionality, a little bit speeded up. But they are in data table, there are several things that we can use or structure information differently. So if you want to structure it with material or product name or any other property you want, you can do that and you use the same method that I'm using now. So now we're done with that, we can go through it uh, simulation, but in this case we use only playing subplans because we're only interested in, in the subplan level, not the object simulation. So you can plan through the different subplans. So if you have a large scale project, so you can only choose to play the subplans. To make it visual for the rest of the team, even though all the concrete are in green, we can change colors of all the objects within the subplan. So here you can see the simulation when we have colorized the subplans, all the objects within the subplan into different colors. So now as a planner, when I've done my work planning the project, and now I want other input from other planners or other team members to review the plan, maybe do some initial changes, and then just how we can share this with the rest of the team. So first of all, just access, go into access control, sorry, and you open that. And the groups that you see here is predefined in Trimmer Connect as Trimmer Connect teams with team members. So you just add a group and if they are able to edit or read the plan that you have created. So now it's accessible for every team member in the project. Now the benefits with the Trimmer Connect Planner. The planning process takes significantly less time than before, only minutes compared to hours or days, using traditional methods. Additionally, with the 3D model and erection sequence is visible to the project planners, production managers, and all its own teams, communication gets more clear. This shared view of the construction plan helps the team coordinate tasks like crane positionings and addresses any potential issues in advance. The overall effect is more efficient project execution with fewer errors. And we are still working on planner extension in the agile development process, which means that we we'll make it more robust and adjusting some functionality still. So I see that there are a lot of attendees in this webinar that is outside the Nordics. Um, so be patient. We will let you know when we're gonna go this globally, but for now it's only for the Nordics. We recommend that you visit our website to take a look at our e-learning for Trimble Connect. It's really useful and you can get some tips how to especially use, uh, organize the data table and own the fine attributes. And this is free. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us directly by email or on our website and we will get back to you. Thank you so much for attending this webinar and see you soon.